Cyprus as well. A South African doctor who shocked the world after being accused of murdering her own three children has been sent for psychiatric evaluation by a New Zealand court. Lauren Dickerson and her husband planned their dream family move to New Zealand for two years before she allegedly murdered their three girls. The crime scene tape has gone from outside the family's home as police have now finished their investigation of the scene. They won't be speaking any further to media as the case is now before the court. Mandy Sibagnoni, you know these kids very well. Perhaps tell us a bit about the kids. And like as they were growing, they used to know me very well. And we used to play and we used to take a walk. And when they, I come, when they started talking, uh, when I entered the house, they will say, oh, Mandy's here. It's so sad that I'll never see the kids here because I was so close to them, I so attached to them. I wish if ever she was here and ask her, Laurie, what did happen to you for you to do this? Because you struggle to get kids. And when they came, you loved them. You cuddled them every day. You took them to school with love. You showed them love. What happened? What went wrong, Laurie? Hi everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel and thank you for joining me here again today. So last week we spoke about the first apparent female serial killer in English history. So if you haven't seen that, I will link it up here for you. But Marianne Cotton was dubbed one of the first English female serial killers who went around with a certain motive. So if you would like to see that, it'll be linked up here. But today we are reeling it in and we are talking about our South African murderers once again. And like we have done before, we are talking about South Africans who have murdered overseas. And this time it's in New Zealand once again. But this case is incredibly tragic because it involves three victims that were unable to defend themselves in any way. But I do just want to make it very clear that this case is still ongoing and everyone in this case is presumed innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. So with that being said, let's get into today's case. Intended for mature audiences only. But before we head over to New Zealand, let's take a step back and let's get into the backstory. Lauren and Graham Dickerson were a very successful couple. Lauren was a medical doctor and 40 years old when this incident occurred. Her husband Graham was a surgeon who specialized in orthopedics. Both Graham and Lauren lived in Pretoria, South Africa, and they were by all accounts very happy. There were some reports that the Dickersons really wanted a family, but Lauren and Graham struggled to conceive, so it took a long time for Lauren to fall pregnant. But eventually, Lauren did end up getting pregnant and she gave birth to a baby girl named Liani. And the couple was incredibly happy with their bouncing baby girl. And then four years later, the couple ended up falling pregnant again and Lauren ended up having twin baby girls named Maya and Carla. Lauren was described as an incredible mother who was attentive, nurturing, like whatever her children needed, she and Graham were there no questions asked. According to a lot of sources, Lauren was very attentive with the children. She would lovingly drop her kids off and was very excited and happy when she would collect her children from school at the end of the day. Graham and Lauren would also play with their children as much as they could. They both lived very busy lives, so they would play and spend as much time with their children as humanly possible. Lauren was described as a very soft and gentle soul and was very introverted. In Lauren's profession, she was described as humble and kind. Now, if you're South African, you know that our doctors are some of the best in the world, hands down, and often South Africans are taken from their professions and offered very well-paying jobs overseas where they can really showcase their profession there. So it doesn't really surprise me that Graham was scouted and that Graham was offered a very well-paying job overseas in New Zealand. The family were offered this job a couple of months before, but in August of 2021, the family then made their move over to Christchurch, New Zealand. But we are still in the middle of a pandemic and the family was then thrown into quarantine and they then spent 10 days in a single hotel room with three children and two adults. Once the 10 days were over and both Graham and Lauren, as well as their three children, all tested negative, they were then set free into the beautiful New Zealand. 
The Dickersons are settling in New Zealand and Graham starts his work at Hill Morton Hospital in Christchurch. And by some accounts, he seems to be the only person working in New Zealand at the time. There may have been some discussion between Lauren and Graham where Lauren would maybe stay home with the kids until the kids were in school and then Lauren would maybe find a job. But I'm just assuming none of this was said. Now what transpired soon after the family arrived in New Zealand happened very, very quickly. So if we recap, the family have just arrived now in August of 2021. They then spend 10 days in quarantine. Graham then goes off to his new job at Hill Morton Hospital and the kids are now left at home alone with Lauren, which is six-year-old Liani, two-year-old Maya and two-year-old Carla. The family stayed in an area called Tamaru and apparently some media reports said that Lauren, before she came to South Africa, was on some type of chronic medication. They weren't very specific on what type exactly. But this chronic medication that Lauren was taking before her and her family then lived in Tomaru was stopped. She stopped taking it just before she went over with her family to New Zealand. Because she was scared that this chronic medication was going to affect her visa and her immigration status. Now, to an extent, I do really understand this because one pill that is accepted in South Africa is completely banned in another country. And apparently New Zealand has very strict protocol on what they allow and what they don't allow into their country. And if anyone watching this video has ever emigrated or lives in New Zealand, can you confirm or deny that they are very strict with regards to chronic medication and entering their country? But basically, New Zealand has very strict rules on potential immigrants and how they can 100% be turned down on the basis of chronic medication or if they do not meet an acceptable standard of health. So we can maybe now understand a little bit of where Lauren's mindset was before she entered New Zealand and why she stopped her medication. About immigrating and immigration to New Zealand. I'm now joined by immigration lawyer Gary Eisenberg. Gary, thank you for your time and good morning to you. Let's talk about this process. Quite rigorous, I hear, but is it factual? Uh, is it quite a strict process to follow? Yes, New New Zealand immigration, very much like Australian immigration, is very precise. They have a very efficient bureaucracy. Uh, it's a points-based system. Its standards of health or acceptable standards of health are very well defined. And you may have a case over here of a psychiatrically disturbed individual on chronic medication who did not want to damage or impose any risk to her and her family's immigration application uh, and, and, and this is the consequence. And uh, Dr. Dickerson may have well suffered from a very severe psychiatric disorder to the extent that it may impose uh, some kind of challenge to New Zealand's uh, medical and health uh, infrastructure. I mm. mean, that is the test. Now, what kind of chronic medication she was taking, the kind of disorder she was suffering from, uh, this doesn't seem to be uh, in the public domain yet. A lot of evidence about how this lady was impacted by the New Zealand immigration process uh, will be revealed. And that right. will be a great insight uh, into the impact it had on her. And with being in quarantine with children and your husband or even your partner, whoever you're there with, I don't have any children, but I have heard from family or friends that do have children. Being in quarantine at first with their children was incredibly humbling and very nice to be able to see their children's quirks that they may have missed by going to work for eight hours a day or just not really focusing so much. But a lot of them did also say that it eventually became very, very stressful because children get bored very easily and you have to constantly try and entertain the children. And I think for Lauren and Graham, being in a new country, trying to figure out everything from scratch, being in quarantine hold with their children, I think it was just a lot. So I am trying to figure out a little bit of what Lauren and Graham may have been going through mentally when they first entered New Zealand. But I think it's still difficult, even with the stressful situation that Lauren and Graham were apparently in, it's still difficult to really comprehend what Lauren did next. And all apparently, because remember this court case is still going on. But in September of 2021, now remember the Dickinsons only arrived in August of 2021. They were in quarantine, Graham started working, and now we're in September near the end. But by September, near the end, Graham comes home from a very busy day of work. He then puts the keys in his door and opens his door to an extremely quiet 
house. What Graham must have experienced next must have been absolutely gut-wrenching for him, but he walked into his very silent home, walked to greet his children, and he found all three of his children dead. Liani, who was six years old, and the twins, Maya and Carla, had all been strangled to death. When Graham continued to walk through the house, he found Lauren, who was still in the house, and it's unclear what kind of state Lauren was in when Graham found her. But when Graham had called police and the ambulance did arrive, they said that she was completely sane and there was nothing going on, apparently. But with the apparent cause of death with the three children, there were some sources that said that they were strangled by hand, but a lot of the sources did say that they were strangled via cable ties. And I'm sure with all of us being here, we know that strangulation is incredibly personal. And I mean, it's easy enough to go and kill someone with a gun because you're at a far distance and you're not really doing the killing, even though you're the one who pulled the trigger. But with strangulation, it is so personal because you're possibly on top of this person, you're looking at them and you can kind of feel the life drain from the person that you're strangling. And for a mother to apparently do this to her children, I think is very, very hard to digest. But police did arrest Lauren on the basis of three counts of murder and police also said that they were investigating no one else with regards to this case. It was only Lauren who was their main suspect. Lauren Dickerson has been charged on three counts of murder and her trial will resume in March of 2023. And because Lauren was arrested in September of 2021, she has been sentenced to an 18-month psychiatric evaluation where she will be until her trial starts and is deemed to be fit by the psychiatric unit. Graham has since come home to South Africa and he did not go to his wife's pre-trial discussions in December of 2021. Graham has said, however, that he forgives his wife and feels that she is as much a victim in this as her children. So we don't know what chronic medication Lauren was on and how it could have affected her mental health at the time that she was emigrating as well to New Zealand. But like I said, Graham Dickerson has forgiven his wife and he also said in a vigil that was held for his children that he hopes that people pray for his wife. The South African government is also aware that Lauren Dickinson has been arrested in New Zealand and they seem to be giving their support to the New Zealand police but I assume that they may support Lauren once the trial goes ahead but they are being respectful of the New Zealand authorities taking her into psychiatric evaluation. But that is all that we know so far. I think stress can affect people very, very differently, but I think stress on the job and stress in the home life is a tough one to defend. But we won't know if she was actually the one who did it or who did it until the trial commences in March of 2023. But let me know what you think of this case down below. And let me know if you want shorter videos like this where we talk more of current affairs or current murders where there isn't necessarily a conclusion as of yet but i hope everyone has a fantastic day further please stay safe out there and don't talk to strangers and i'll see you again next week bye